So in piecing together the whole evocation process and how I want you to go about invoking, or I'm sorry, evoking, don't invoke yet, oh, evoke the 72 spirits of the Galatia, something clicked, came together, and in doing a lot of work with my spirits and the spirits uh, who've sort of been guiding me through the years of the March Rider ritual, I found a way that I can conglomerate everything together and create full cohesion between a magical training process as well as putting you out there in spiritual warfare and giving you an experience that I don't think has been done before, but right to a point, right? It's the, it's the whole fucking point. So what I've done is because I realize most of you don't have the tools, you don't have a magical sword, you don't have a wand, you you don't have a, uh, a working space, uh, some of you are very new to this, and you want to go about it and feel very protected, uh, you're not sure really how to feel interacting with spirits, you're not really sure how to feel about um, especially evoking something to your presence, a lot of you are worried about what might happen, the whole ins and outs of being magician. So, okay, here's a step into that, but something that will actually manifest something in return, which is the most important part of why do magic? Why why even fucking bother if, if what you do on the astral world doesn't manifest to the physical, yeah? So that's the whole point. More so also because what you manifest on the physical world builds your afterlife and then by you know it goes further than that so what I've done is on the blog I've written it all out I am going to be introducing you to a spirit that really came strong really came through wow a spirit I had not done anything with since I invoked him or evoked him I'm gonna really have to watch that evoked years and years and years and years ago but whew, wow um, number 72 number 72 the spirit Andro Malas um, powerful and one which who is really 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 dedicated to going after thieves the wicked so Anyone else have an idea of who that might be? Okay. He's also very much about returning the stolen goods and property back to the proper people, as well as bringing thieves and the wicked to justice. So I think that we can do the whole March Rider ritual based on that and introduce you to the evocation process. Because I know most of you don't have the tools, don't have the ritual set up. I have worked with him. I have a contract with him, a spiritual binding contract, witness under Lord Saturn, that you will be able to evoke him, work with him, and see him through a scrying mirror or a scrying bowl. So you need either a black mirror or you need a black bowl. You can use a black bowl, a glass black bowl, you can buy those at the dollar store, or you can take a clear black bowl and paint the outside a lacquered black. Why outside? Because water has a tendency to putrefy paint if it's on the inside. So those are your options, and I think all of them are good. The setup is not going to be all that expensive. You don't need very much. So I've really broken this down and made probably what you have around the house usable and any monetary increments is going to be very very minimal incense and candles really that's about it um, there are going to be some key components about this it starts tomorrow so sometime this week go out see what you don't have 
In fact, try to work with what you do have as opposed to adding more stuff. See what you do have. There are some basic essentials that you'll need, but not too many. Um, um, hmm. Primarily, this working is going to go on for the entire year, okay? Every three months, I have worked that this particular spirit, Andrew Malice, is going to receive an offering, and I have that offering written down on the blog. Um, also, not going to be a very expensive offering. He is going to work with you directly, as well as carry out our greater work, and that is targeted of all these, of course, the Illuminati, bankers, whole thing. So, he's going to have a profound effect, and the more people who who engage in this process and get in, you know, get on board and follow the steps that I have laid out, you will have success. Yeah, it's going to feel a little spooky at first. Yeah, you're going to feel a little unsure, especially if you've never done any magic before. It's going to feel strange, but that's the point, is for you to get used to it. And in your own life, when you start dealing with weird situations, you're going to be able to handle them better. Uh, also maintaining where your astral body is, um, what your astral body is doing, engaging in a process that is beyond you, beyond your normal waking consciousness, awakens you, awakens your psychic powers. Um, it's it's going to be a process, but don't worry. I'll do my best to guide you through it. The ritual outline is a perfect perfect guide through for it. 12, 12 steps once a week take you 30 minutes most. Unless you really want to converse, maybe you can. I have. Um, I've made rituals last hours because I'm, I was fascinated with what the spirit was telling me and was just writing things down, you know, ferociously. Wow, when they come true. Wow, when they come true. No fucking around. Wow, when they come true. A um, couple key points. The, the process of calling down the white light. It's going to sound like this. It's going to be based on um, E, A, O. Okay? Most hermetic magicians are going to know that. That has a whole history to it. I still use it. I find it valid. We can talk about that whole thing later if you really want to. But the first process, the first intonement is this. Okay? The second intonement. Oh. Third intonement. Okay, strung together. That's how it sounds. It really does create a very unique harmonic resonance, a vibrationary tone. Uh, it clears, cleanses, and empowers. It has a whole bunch of different sources where it comes from. I think it comes from multiple sources uh, just because it works. It really does. So follow that blog link and get started. Also, I greatly encourage you to begin doing your own blogs doing your own videos in regards to your experiences with this. Andrew, Ma Andrew Malice appears as a very powerful spirit, uh, very large, very muscular, a little paunch, a little bit older, very kind in the face, but very fierce eyes. Uh, he's wrestling always this huge viper, right? But when he speaks to you, it's as if he 
does not realize what he's doing. He's always grasping this thing by the neck and holding it so it can't strike him, which is always continually trying, but never actually does. He has a whole story that he's slowly releasing, and that's something that I will eventually release back when he feels it's okay to do that. Uh, he says that he used to be a localized deity of a people that were conquered and massacred and enslaved by the individuals who claim to be the early Israelites. Uh, and he does not necessarily say that the whole King Solomon story is, is, is legit in the way that it was told. And that's not uncommon of the other spirits of the Goetia. Um, they tend to say that there was a lot of over embellishment and that perhaps King Solomon was not at all what he claimed to be, nor is he what the people the Israelites claim that he was, um, which wouldn't necessarily surprise me. But the story is the story, and there's a lot of parable, and I think that's mostly what it is, is parable. But the spirits themselves, especially this one, he's very, very geared towards punishing the wicked and retribution and working with those who truly have something to gripe about. And I believe that most of humanity has something seriously seriously fucking valid to gripe about. So, this is the process for an entire year, at least once a week, evoke the spirit, follow the protocol, get to know him, speak with him, work with him, empower his work, in turn, he can empower you. So this is a real merger, this is a powerful merger that's going to occur. If you're in on it, it's time to get in on it. If you really want to do the work of a magician, do the work of a magician. Every day, speak aloud the invocation of the March Rider ritual. I'm going, to ex I'm going to extend this ritual out the entire year. That's going to really, really spread out all the energetic pings and other things that I receive during the March Rider ritual and it can fuck me up. If you've seen the other videos way back when, I mean, honest to God, I was out for months sometimes. Just, wow. Wow. So, being, being a singular magician, not easy, but it's the work of a magician. Now you get to experience the work of a magician. Hopefully, this catches on. Hopefully, we can see results. I mean, real fucking results coming from this. So, you're going to evoke him. You're going to state that you are fully aware that humanity has been fucked with, that humanity has had its birthright stolen, that humanity has gone through a criminal genesis, that it is time for the true thieves, those who really do steal, not only just monetary wealth, but spiritual wealth, your life, your time, your energy. It's time to end this. It's time to be done. It's time to be over with. That these individuals need to come to justice. That these individuals need to come to a divine justice. That these individuals need to come to a magical justice. That everything that they have fucking stolen, everything that they have taken from you, everything that they have raped, plundered, and pillaged from you and your brothers and your sisters, your mother, your father, all the line of the people going back to the very beginning of this criminal genesis is finally fucking returned. All that free energy, all those Tesla inventions, all those things that are supposed to be yours, are supposed to be yours, is finally fucking returned. And those who perpetrate this evil, this vileness, come to justice. The more people that get behind this movement, the more we can do it. Granted, there are things about this evocation process that I have worked with and that under my house and the spirits of my house are going to cut you some slack. Okay? So, I don't want to hear from a bunch of other fucking hermetic magicians. Oh, that's not the way you do things. That's not the way we do things in our Crowleyan order. <laughs> oh, no. You need to sodomize the 10-year-old boy before that happens. Mm, apparently, to Crowley, that is the only way to get energy. Fuck you! I don't care. I don't care about other ceremonial magicians. I don't care about other hermetic orders or whatever the fuck you people do because it's failed. 
because it's all about me, 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 and all your greed and all your self-entitled nonsensical bullshit. I don't care. I'm not about that. I've never been about that. I'll never be about that. If you guys want to do some masturbatory intellectual exercises in a big giant jerk-off talk circle, then fine. Go fucking do it. Go fucking do it. It's not like I, not like me, like I'm going to give a fuck about what you say or change my ways or change anything about my legit fucking house. Fuck you. Fuck you. So no, if you want to hop on board, yes, I realize that parts of it have been shifted, but it makes it available. It makes it available through the structure that I have set up and know how to set up. So I can bring people in. They can get comfortable. And as they progress, we can build the foundation further underneath them when they are able to stand better on their own. Magic can work like this if you have the structure in place to begin with. That kind of discounts a lot of other orders out there. Fucking cry about it. I don't care. So, do you want in? I have opened the door. If you're going to walk through, walk through. But no, know, know this. Don't walk through only to want to turn around and walk the fuck out. If you're going to walk through, you're going to walk through. And you're going to be involved. These aren't just thought forms. This isn't something you can just sort of ignore when you're done with it. You say you want to be a magician, so let's be a fucking magician. Deal with it. Banish, banish, banish. You don't like the energy around you? Banish. Okay? Restart again. This spirit's no demon. It's not a vampire. It's not a it's not some sort of parasitic spiritual leech. He's strong, he's powerful, he's legit. He's not there to harm you. Believe me, there are bigger energetic meals out there to be had. You are just in this process, helping him to go about and get those. Deserving. Highly deserving. In the process, in return, he helps you get more comfortable. He will probably give you advice. He might even give you rituals. I don't know. Whatever you guys do together is your thing. But I know in this process, he'll probably be brought into the house. Worthwhile spirit. Very much so. So if you can't evoke him once a week, that's, that's ideal. But if you can't, that's okay. Once every two weeks. Once every three weeks at the absolute bare minimum. But you've got to be part of this. Even if at first you feel weird and nothing, eh, it's, it's, it's iffy, stick with it. Because that's the process. It's going to take time for you to really get confident in this. It's going to take time for you to feel comfortable and stop second guessing. It just becomes, it become, it just, it comes out of you and you're not even sure just how deep it flows. It just, it's just going to happen eventually and you're going to feel those vibrations and correspondences. And the first time you do it, you're going to be like, whoa, okay, wait. And then, you know, it's going to it's gonna haunt you for a couple days of like, what did I see? Where did this fucking thing come from? Like, wow, you know. But that's the process of being a magician. You can't talk about magic. You can't talk about spirits and say so you actually want to do it without getting your hands in the fucking water, without getting wet, without dunking your head under and seeing what is in this astral world that everyone keeps talking about. Direct, personal experience. That's the key, and that's what this ritual is going to give you. I'm going to give you two powerful protection rituals. One is the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram. Second is the Calling, the, the calling of the Knights Round Protection Ritual. Okay? Both are on the blog. Okay? Both are on the blog. Learn them. Do them. 
do them often. If you feel like there's something around you, do the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram. Do the Calling of the Knights Round Ritual. Powerful, powerful rituals. Also in this process, you are evoking St. George, okay? So he's going to be with you on the astral sphere while you are evoking Andromalus. You are also going to be petitioning the goddess Luna, who is the queen, high holy sorceress of the entire astral realm. Wow. I mean, what more do you want at that point, spiritual protection-wise? That's fucking huge. Huge. And then you're evoking a spirit that actually, actually cares about you, actually understands your plight. I mean, wow, nothing could be more ideal going into the situation. Plus, because you're working with these three spirits, you are a powerful goddess, at least one, and a, an ancient local deity, and then you know, St. George in this house, also ancient local deity. We'll get into why that is. You're working with three gods, goddesses, and being within their vibrational realm, Wow, you are going to learn and evolve a fuck ton. And for an entire year with laid out process, you're going to know the Lesser Banishing Ritual inside and out. You're going to feel comfortable opening up a planetary sphere. You're going to know how to perform the Calling of the Night's Round Ritual like that. It's going to be inside you and you're going to have experienced powerful, magical vibrations, and you're going to watch a lot of your work manifest. How that's going to manifest, I don't know yet. I don't know. But that's the way it is. Yes, you'll probably encounter some things that aren't going to particularly love the work that you're doing. Oh, well. You encounter people every day who don't like what you do, who have a problem with you. or You know, it's the same thing. People think, oh, because it's it's spiritual or it's magical, it's it's something I can't handle. It's well out. No, you can't handle it because you're not aware. Once you're aware, you'll find that your only true safety is in danger. Once you're in danger, you find your real safety. Because you know where that danger is. You know what it's capable of. It's no longer a mystery anymore. You're not wondering. You're like, God, I wonder what it's like. Because you're seeing it. You're experiencing it. You're knowing it. Knowing and thinking you know two different things. And this is the type of occult magic I practice. I know. Others, they think they know but they don't know. I mean, you don't know what you don't know. So we are going to move past armchair occultic intellectualism, okay? No more. No more. No more. Now it's time to practice. Now it's time to put your feet on the path. You can't not eventually start walking the life. You've talked about it, you've thought about it, you've wondered about it. Now it's time to do it. We'll see what happens. We'll see how it manifests in your life. This is powerful shit. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Slightly simplified. So what? So what? Just because it's not as difficult as it could be? Does it make it not real? Does it make it not, not applicable? No. No. It's a journey step by step. And this is a, for most of you, a first but very fucking profound step onto this path. A path that hopefully a lot of you will walk and because of our collective force targeted at a singular result, a singular process that all our collective working 
can empower that in a big way. So we're not just individuals out here operating. We've come together and we've made a formidable fist that we can target and face fuck anything that comes in our path. Something that's been in our way for a long fucking time. Occupy the astral. That's a term that I've coined. There's a reason for that. Give it no space to grow and manifest. We start doing that, it limits their ability, it limits their power. This has been a secret power source of theirs for a long fucking time. No more. We are beginning to wake up. This is the age of Aquarius, right? I am dispelling the curse of the New Age. The New Age says you can do whatever the fuck you want because it's all a big sky party and the universe is your friend and we're all love and light and consequence doesn't matter and someone else is going to come do it for you and Jesus is going to come down and the Pleiadians will come down and the Arterians will come down and the Porcupillians and the Platypusians and the fucking apatoids and whoever the fuck else in this mythology right or wrong is going to come do it for you and I can do shit for you <laughs> and laugh at you at best no this is a human work it starts with us it'll end with us it'll end with us on top victorious. The, the Aquarian age is our fleeting moment of chance. We have to seize it, take it, and say if there's going to be a new age, there's going to be a new golden era on the horizon, we seize that moment and say what it is because there's another force, another co-opted, hijacked, manipulated force that has been saying, oh, no, that new age is ours for a long fucking time. But they're 30-ish years behind their schedule. I feel that we have reached the point where we are now on schedule. Let's start doing some real work. I've laid the groundwork. Walk with me, yes. It might be a good idea. You know, you've tried other things. How's that panned out? Let's see what we got. I promise you nothing other than the opportunity and the chance. So, who among you wants to be a magician? Go to my blog. Fucking prove it. Oh, yeah. Now nah, we'll see. Now nah, we'll see. Off subject slightly, my email box is fucking full. I'll get back to you all. There are those out there that I really do need to talk to. I'll get back to you all. I am writing, I am busy, I'm, there are things going on that all are going to culminate. Cut me some slack. Cut me some slack. Okay? Culmination is, is coming. I will get to things as the time permits and in their own place. I think you will be startled and happy with the results. Well now, you've got your marching orders. Put your fucking boots to the ground!